Hi everyone, Luna would like to give you some homework advice. If you give me a kiss, then you get the cookie. Give me a kiss. Oh, thank you. Are you ready for some homework advice? Let's do it. All right, let's take a look at our homework assignment. This, this homework assignment for lesson three involves us calculating a final grade in a course for Professor Charles Xavier based on these input point range values. So for example, if your point range is an 80, it falls in this range, and therefore your grade is a C and your grade points is a 2.0. So let's first think about this in terms of inputs and outputs. So our input is going to be a numerical grade points. For example, 151 examples, 151, 0, 45.8, those are all numerical grade points. And then our output depends on the input. So if our input is, well, let's 151's out of bounds. Let's start with something that's in bounds, like 149.3. And then we'll do zero, and then we'll do something out of bounds, like minus 100. Okay, that's better. So if our input is 149.3, then according to this point range chart, that's this range and that the output should be grade A points 40. So what am I going to output? I'm going to output the gr letter grade one of A, B, C, D, or F, and then the grade points one of 40, 30, 20, 10 or 0.0. All right. So the first part of any program is understanding the inputs and outputs. So I think we have a good handle on that. And this table is really going to sort of help us write our program. However, there's more to our program than just this. What do we do if we, we have a, a grade that's outside these point ranges? Well, down here it says, your code should perform a bounce checking on the input. Valid inputs are in the range 0 to 150. Your code should handle non-integer input. So those are two additional cases that we need to handle in our inputs. So this is why using the problem simplification approach is a good idea. In the problem simplification approach, we write the program several times. So I'm just going to sort of write this out. Problem simplification. What do we do? We write the program, write simpler versions of the program, adding complexity with each iteration. So I suggest the following iterations. Maybe in the first iteration, So in the first iteration, perhaps what you do is you write a program to output only for A and B grades. You know, A would be 4.0 grades and B would be 3.0. Right? So that would be range 125 to 150, 100 to 124 only, you know, this is, I guess, for A, 125 to 150 equals A, and 100 to 124 equals B. So it's a simpler program. You start by solving that one first. Okay, then after you solve that program, you rewrite the program to handle all 
grade cases. So I guess you would output for only two grade cases. A, B, C, D, and F. Then we rewrite the program to handle input less than zero and input greater than 150. And then finally, we rewrite the program to handle non-numeric input. For example, I input five like that. And then that should say, you know, that's not a number that I can deal with. So that's basically the approach that we want to take to solve this problem through problem simplification. Probably want to write this, this program like four times. So let me flesh out some of these iterations with you a little bit. The strategy for, you know, we are in conditionals here. So the strategy for doing number one, you'll probably want to use uh, if, I guess I'm going to put it down here. Whoop, let me do this. So strategy, strategery. To do iteration number one, you want to use your if, if, ah, oh man, Mike, with my typing, if, you know, L if, else. Oh man, my typing's bad. I keep hitting the wrong key. Uh, the if, else, ladder. Okay, you want to use that. So, you know, if the grade is 125 or more, then it's an A. If the grade, L, L if the grade is 100 or more, then it's a B, right? Then in strategy two, you want to expand the, oh God, you don't want to watch me type it. Expand the if, L if, else ladder to handle all cases. Then in step three, you want to continue to expand the ladder, the if else else ladder to handle when the input is bigger than 150 and then the input is less than zero, which maybe that's the else clause. I don't know. It's up to you. Okay. But iterations one, two, and three can all be handled with a single chain of ifs when you think about it. There's lots of ways to solve it. I'm just giving you advice, right? You don't have to take my advice. You can do it differently if you want. Iteration number four, to solve iteration four, number four, you're going to need try except because we, when you input a value, I guess I should show you. When you input a value, like let's suppose it's called uh, points and it's gonna be a float input, right? Enter points. And I run this and I enter points like 100 and there you go, 125 and it works, right? And I run it again and I enter points one, uh, this and I get a value error. What this is trying to address here where it says, your code should handle non-integer input. That is strategy number, or iteration number four. That is the strategy that uses a try accept. So you should try accept the code, and then when you get a value error, you should print, you know, that's not valid input. Try accept and handle the value error. So that is the strategy for dealing with the fourth iteration of the program. So again, iterations one, two, and three, you're just building out a huge if-else ladder.
you'll have to make sure you've got your expressions in the right order to make sure it handles the, the, the grading ranges properly. A strategy for doing that is start with the higher numbers and work your way down to the lower numbers. That way you don't have to test the bottom range, the both ranges, you could just test one range. And then you should be putting these values in variables and then at the very end of the program, print the answer. So that's always a good strategy to use is rather than print these out, put them in variables. And then at the very end of the program, print, print out the answer. So again, you're going to input points and you're going to have a bunch of ifs, right? L if, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then way down here, you're going to print the letter grade and the grade points. Not like this, but really nice looking, right? And that's basically how you want to approach it. And that is our homework advice. And that's it for this week's homework advice. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.